Here is our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Inside. I'm Tian Wei. After being postponed for two months almost, China's largest political gathering, the two sessions, are set to kick off next week. The event draws worldwide attention as it may send messages about China's economy, among other key areas like public health. With the coronavirus now under control somewhat in China, businesses, both domestic and foreign, are gradually getting back on track. What to expect now from this year's two sessions? What kind of solution is likely to provide for some of the most daunting tasks facing the country? Before our discussion, take a look at this. China postponed the two sessions for two and a half months to gain a wider window to fight the unexpected COVID-19 pandemic. Now conditions for holding the meetings have been met. China's top legislature, the National People's Congress, announced that it will hold the annual session starting on May 22nd. The National Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, on the other hand, said its annual session is set to commence on May 21st. The dates were set once the domestic transmission of COVID-19 within China had subsided. For this year, national lawmakers will consider China's long-expected draft civil code, the government work report, and other stable documents at the annual legislative session. However, due to the epidemic, health is expected to top the agenda with a slew of public health-related legislation in the works. Meanwhile, once the worst hit by the COVID-19, China is now one of the first to restart its economy in a gradual and orderly manner, offering hope to a world still affected by the pandemic. The upcoming two sessions are expected to roll out a series of policies and measures which will spur development at home, help stabilize and reactivate the global supply chains, and boost confidence in the global economy. And as the epidemic is still uncontrolled in many countries, issues like international cooperation to combat the disease and China-U.S. ties are all in the spotlight for this year's two sessions. And for more on the upcoming two sessions in China, we have uh, via Zoom in Beijing, Jia Qingguo, professor at the School of International Studies with Peking University. Meanwhile, in New York, Fred Tang, president of the China America Public Affairs Institute. Welcome to both of you. Thank you so much for joining Thanks. us. I want to start by asking Professor Jia Qingguo, uh, as you are a standing committee member of the CPPCC, tell me more about what do you think about significance for this year's session at a very critical time and certainly delayed for almost two months. This is a very important occasion uh, of, uh, uh, you know, for, for China uh, to discuss all kinds of uh, policy issues. Uh, we cannot miss this. Um, uh, and also, uh, it is significant because, uh, uh, you know, China has been quite successful in the first phase of uh, the fight against the virus. And uh, the holding of uh, Lianghui itself uh, shows that how much progress China has made uh, so far. But of course, we have a difficult time uh, ahead. We have a lot of challenges ahead. But it, it's time for us to sit down and talk about uh, all kinds of issues, our experience uh, in fighting the COVID-19, and also uh, lessons and, and what uh, can be done in the future. Mm. Uh, Professor Ya, if I could, China is facing a series of daunting tasks. Uh, of course, the economy, that is a big question for everybody, every country, post-COVID-19, but also at the same time, how geopolitics combined with all of the other elements like to have a dampening effect on China and also its relations with the others. Professor Jia, you've been working on international relations for decades. Your thought? Yeah, the COVID-19 crisis uh, has uh, uh, changed the world a great deal. Uh, first, uh, you know, this is a great pandemic. Uh, a lot of people uh, got affected and, and uh, Actually, millions of people got affected, yeah. and a lot of people uh, died. Uh, second, the economy uh, of the world 
is uh, shut down for a while, has been shut down for a while, uh, and uh, a lot of activities uh, cannot continue. Uh, as a result, the world economy is getting into some kind of a recession. And also in the process, um, we see uh, geopolitical uh, challenges. You know, uh, China and the U.S., uh, their relationship is now in a bad shape. Uh, mm. We should be working together mm -hmm. to fight the virus, but now um, we are engaged in all kinds of uh, uh, trading uh, accusations. Global cooperation for uh, dealing with global challenges is also being affected. A lot of things are happening. Um, it's unfortunate that the world is, has not been working together mm. to fight the virus, okay. uh, to fight the pandemic. Uh, I oh. hope uh, you know, we'll find a way to, to come together to, to do that. Fred, you and I have been talking throughout the past two sessions over the past two years of MTCC, PPCC, you were a special overseas invitee. So obviously this time you can now participate in person in Beijing because of travel ban. But what do you make of t this year's session yourself? Well, I think that this year's session, this session, like Professor Zhao said, it is an important event uh, for China, uh, both for passing legislation and as well as gathering the people from all over China on a national level to discuss issues of importance uh, to the day-to-day -day life of the people. So this was delayed from March and now it's May. It is, I think it signifies certainly uh, the easing of the virus in China and the, the, the taking a handle on it. And I think that this is a, a time for, uh, so for the delegation to meet. But certainly this time, these two sessions will be different than most other sessions. Uh, because of the coronavirus, because of all of the, 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 the issues, but mm. I, I'm, I'm, it's going on. Talking about China-U.S. relations, both of you are very passionate about them, been doing great things over the decades. Uh, some say we should not have much expectations at all because of the political year in the U.S. Meanwhile, because of the dampening effect of the COVID-19, at least the first and the second round already going on, uh, your thoughts about that, and how is that likely to have its impact on foreign policy blueprint and also mapping out its potential here in China, Professor Jia? Certainly, the relationship has been in a difficult uh, period. In the past few weeks, we had a lot of conferences and meetings uh, uh, on the internet uh, yeah. or web webinars. <laughs> Uh, in which we talk about China-U.S. relationship. Uh, one of the themes that is repeated is people urging uh, that uh, when we manage our relationship, uh, we should uh, not uh, have too much expectation. Uh, we should try hard to, uh, to, do, uh, to improve it uh, step by step. Uh, but at the same time, we should try to avoid actions to uh, contribute to the downward uh, development uh, of the relationship. Uh, so we have to be realistic, pragmatic. At the same time, we should not lose hope. Mr. Tong, uh, Professor Jia gave a laundry list of the challenges that China believes it faces in terms of uh, dealing with the United States and even seeking opportunities to work together. Do you have also a laundry list uh, uh, as your observation about working with China? Well, I think that uh, the, uh, the, uh, there are lists of things, uh, but I think any relationship, uh, it has to be mutually uh, willing to work with each other. If one side is not willing to work with the other side, uh, that relationship will not work at all. Uh, Donald Trump's administration is unprecedented in the U.S. history in terms of his manner, his tone, the way of talking about things and, and how they communicate and how they present mm -hmm. things. It's never seen before. However, we right now in the United States is lack of the kind of true leadership to speak out against that. The United States is a country. It's supposed to be if you see something that's wrong, you can speak out. But whether the Democrats or Republicans, then nobody is willing to speak out 
against something is clearly is wrong. Mm. Um, so for China, I think is that when relationship don't work, you don't have to work on the relationship. You work on yourself. You make sure yourself is stronger and stronger. And that's time again to prove uh, you will help you to build more relationship, to have more friends, is when you are strong and when you're able to take care and care for others, uh, then you will be in a good position right. to have more friends. Whether it's United States or not, that I do not think it matters. But you want to have a lot of friends in this world. At least there are a lot of friends in the United States. That's already a thing to be celebrated about. Uh, having said that, though, China, United States only making up 40% of the global GDP. There are other 60% in the rest of the world. So uh, how much a vision uh, should be established and further nurtured, uh, Professor Jia, even with your decades of researching about China-U.S. relations, that China should understand this and also when dealing with the United States, bear this in mind. The world is watching. Well, the world is facing grave challenges. Uh, in uh, reviving the economy and uh, promote uh, growth. Uh, yeah, we have uh, some difficulties, uh, but I think China is willing to work with the U.S., with uh, other countries to uh, in this uh, uh, process. I, I think uh, the U.S., uh, even the Trump administration, uh, would like to uh, uh, work together on this. Uh, it's in U.S. interest, also in, in, in other countries' interests. Mm. So um, uh, I, I think we should, uh, you know, come together uh, to chip uh, our, chipping our efforts uh, to uh, make sure that we have an earlier recovery of the economy. Mm. Earlier we heard the phone call between Chinese Vice Premier Liu He and also the Secretary Milchen and also Mr. Lighthizer in regarding the continuation of discussion between the two sides. Uh, both sides mentioned, if I read from their statement, uh, which is about uh, cooperation on economic, macroeconomic and public health policies. So. Uh, as long as there's an area already being um, spotted, uh, are there specific actions that can be encouraged? Are there signs of specific actions of cooperation that you have noticed? Uh, Mr. Tung, would you like to go first? Well, I think, um, you know, the dialogue has been going on for a long time, ever since President Trump got into the office, the China side, has been working uh, willingly and hoping to settle, especially on the trade area. They went through 13, 14 rounds of talk, and in it, uh, the, the U.S. size demand has just become more and more intolerable. Uh, certainly, the phone call is good, but I do think that there need to be actions. Uh, however, in the U.S. side, I do not see on the current White House administration there's any action that they were willing to take uh, really to work on this, especially until the election time. I'm, I'm afraid that there will be uh, more rhetoric that will be coming out, mm. and certainly that will not take it lightly either. Mm. So, Professor Jia, your thoughts? Some people are touting the idea that, uh, uh, you know, at this moment, uh, it's difficult to, for the two countries to work together <laughs> or to cooperate uh, directly. Uh, but uh, I think we can do things unilaterally uh, uh, with the other side, uh, you know, uh, doing things uh, parallel. Uh, to, uh, to us, uh, like uh, we uh, can, uh, uh, you know, uh, try to uh, urge countries take the promoting investment mm. uh, and also li further liberalization of trade uh, yes. and uh, try to work with other countries to, uh, you know, macroeconomic policies mm -hmm. to stabilize mm -hmm. uh, the economy. So uh, the, the U.S. may not 
work with China directly, but uh, it's also in its interest. Uh, mm. Well, as long as not objecting to it, <laughs> if it can chip in, uh, that's better. So uh, this is this, this, in this way, uh, you know, we can uh, help each other indirectly, uh, mm. and we can uh, by by uh, helping the, the world. So there are different ways of working together at this uh, unusual moment. Yeah. Um, Exactly. Uh, finally, before we go, I would like to hear from both of you. What do you think are some of the most important issues that needs to be discussed? And what messages would you expect uh, with this year's very special two sessions, the political season in China? Mr. Tang, you go first. I, I think that certainly uh, COVID-19 or disease uh, uh, control, it will be a very, very hot topic. In the healthcare area, the capacity, the relationship, and all of these things, I think it will be looking at very firmly. But also, a lot of the uh, standards being set, such as alleviating extreme poverty and many of other things, uh, they will probably look at it in terms of how much that they have achieved so far. Uh, certainly, before this, they were working very hard on that. Mm -hmm. So I think that those are the issues. Um, you know, there's a lot of domestic issues in China, and I think those will always continue and, and not be put on the sideline. I see. Professor Jia, your thought? Yeah, I agree. Um, I think, uh, first of all, uh, the COVID-19 um, should summarize our experience and lessons. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, you know, we should try to, uh, we will talk about uh, how to strengthen our uh, uh, you know, uh, public health system, uh, especially the system to monitor, uh, you know, potential uh, virus uh, outbreaks, uh, and, and also to a um, uh, lot of time will be spent on uh, how to renormalize re mm. <laughs> the, the life, uh, uh, how to come back to work. And, and uh, at the same time, preventing uh, a, a second outbreak yes. of, of the uh, of the virus uh, crisis, and and of course uh, the third thing is the economy. How to uh, revive our economy? Uh, it has been hit uh, very hard, yes. uh, just like uh, economies in other countries. But how to revive it, especially in, 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 with with the weakening of demand on the part of the rest of the world. Uh, how do we achieve uh, economic growth uh, mm. uh, in this kind of circumstances? And, and all kinds of other things. Uh, so this is going to be a very uh, dynamic uh, uh, session uh, yeah. full of uh, uh, things to talk about. Absolutely. A lot of crucial issues to be discussed. We're hopeful. We are hopeful that there will be some results and solutions coming out of it. For now, I want to thank both of you. We want to stay safe and be well. Jia Qing Guo from Peking University, Standing Committee Member of the CPPCC, and Fred Tung, President of America China Public Affairs Institute. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.